Have you ever exported a video from Adobe Premiere Pro only to find that it looks completely different in QuickTime or other media players? Maybe it looks washed out, too bright or less saturated. Don't worry, you are not alone. In this video, we'll dive into why this happens, what Adobe Premiere Pro 2024 has introduced to address this issue and how you can fix it. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. The issue boils down to difference in gamma standards. QuickTime for instance use 1.96 gamma which is brighter while Premiere Pro traditionally used 2.4 gamma which matches broadcast TV standards. This mismatch makes your video appear brighter and less saturated in QuickTime. Even though it look completely different in Adobe Premiere Pro while you were editing that video. Gamma mainly affects the mid-range brightness of an image. A file edited at 2.4 Gamma may look perfect for TV but lighter and less saturated on a QuickTime player. It is important to understand this difference to make informed adjustment. Adobe has introduced a gamma changing update in Adobe Premiere Pro 2024. Now we can adjust viewer gamma settings directly within the Lumetri panel. This gives you the flexibility to match gamma settings to your targeted platform whether it broadcasts TV, QuickTime or web playback. Here's how to access and change the settings. Go to the Lumetri panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. Click on the setting tab. Enable display color management if it's not already turned on. Go to the project tab and choose your desired gamma level from the three options. The first one is broadcast 2.4, second one is web 2.2 and the third and last one is QuickTime 1.96 and that's it. The viewer gamma will now match your selection. But remember this setting affects only the viewer not the exported file. So which gamma setting should you use? Let's break it down. 2.4 gamma perfect for TV or broadcast projects. 1.96 gamma best if your video is primarily viewed on QuickTime or similar players. 2.2 gamma a balanced option for web platform like YouTube, Facebook or Vimeo. If your project spans multiple platform, you'll need to choose a compromise or create multiple export tailored to each platform. If you stick to 2.4 gamma but need an export that looks better in QuickTime, here are three options that you can follow. The first one is using a gamma compensation LUT. You can just use a gamma compensation LUT while you export the video. Go to the export tab and from there go to the effects panel. There you'll see a Lumetri color LUT. You can just use your downloaded gamma compensation LUT that can be downloaded from Adobe's website. Just download that LUT and use that LUT here. And then if you export that video, it will look perfectly fine when you played back on QuickTime. This gamma compensation LUT in export setting adjusts gamma and saturation. The second method is using Adobe After Effects. If you're using Adobe After Effects for your project, you can just change the color space of your Adobe After Effects project. Change it to sRGB for compatibility with web and QuickTime. That's it. And the last one is making a custom adjustment layer. So when you are editing your video in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can just create a new adjustment layer and on that adjustment layer, add a Lumetri color and from that Lumetri color effects, go to the Luma curve effect and there you can decrease the midpoint of Luma curve slightly. Increase the saturation by 2 or 4 percent, that's it. This method ensures your video looks consistent across various platforms. One last question you may have, which gamma value should you use? 2.4, 2.2 or 1.96? Well, it depends. In most cases, you should use Gamma 2.2 in Adobe Premiere Pro as it is considered the standard for most viewing environments including web viewing and typical computer monitors. However, if you're working for broadcast television or in a very dark room, then using Gamma 2.4 might be more appropriate. One common mistake is assuming that Premiere Pro new settings changes the exported file. They don't. They only affect what you see in your viewer side. Always double check your settings for each project and if you switch gamma levels, be consistent in your workflow. Understanding gamma difference and how Premiere Pro handles them can save your hours of frustration and ensure your video looks great everywhere. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tips just like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, goodbye.